What's up everyone? My name is Josh and this is Josh Unboxed and welcome back to The Daily Grind, a video series in which we talk about particular cards, play, strategies, and news and how it affects the overall sports card market. In other words, we're just trying to find ways to help us navigate through the craziness that is the sports card market of today and also to help us make much more sound purchasing decisions and selling decisions. Today's topic, I want to talk about the young guys of the NBA, the young cats. In particular, I wanted to put the focus on guys like Zion, Ja, Trey and Luca, and how we're seeing a downturn on their cards. Now, if you've been following the sports card market, uh, especially with the modern players in the NBA, you've come to notice that the cards have dipped a bit. I attribute it to two things, one of two things, or probably a combination of both. And one of them is the recent run-up in vintage. I think what's happening is that the hobby has shifted its focus onto vintage cards. And I kind of can see people selling their modern cards in order to put their money into safer plays with the Hall of Famers and the GOATs of the game, which is a very, very sound strategy. It's one that I employ myself, but I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing the downturn in the NBA. And another reason is because we're like in the thick of the season. I know it just started a month ago, but you got to think about it. A month is a long time and we've got to see these players play. Uh, we got to see their teams perform. And this downturn has actually come to be expected. I mean, in a long uh, season, the card market is very cyclical. And I talked about this in a couple of my other videos and I'm going to use the NBA as an example um, right now to talk about it. In the offseason, we hit a floor. Um, that's because out of sight, out of mind, there's really nothing to generate hype or demand aside from like summer league, NBA draft, free agency. And then we see a fever pitch right before the season starts where everyone's all excited. Um, people are speculating, placing expectations on particular players, teams. If these guys play well, you know, I can see these cards rising. And then the season starts. And then from there, three things happen. One, you either exceed expectations, two, you meet expectations, or three, you don't meet the expectations. And in all these scenarios, the card market reacts in a certain way. If you exceed expectations, card values go up. If you meet expectations, they stagnate or even dips. And if you don't meet expectations, it definitely dips. And I think that's what we're seeing here with these, with these um, cards. So much expectation was placed on these players um, to the point where now that they're performing, they're doing one of those three things. And we're seeing the downturn happen right now because uh, like I said, I think the expectations were just too high for these players and the prices were built in on that already. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna see if there's a good buying opportunity for these cards and also provide an option of when to sell as well and how to strategize which cards to buy or which player out of the four to buy. We're gonna look at the Prism cards, uh, PSA 10 on card ladder, because I feel that that has the best data in terms of seeing the downturn. And we're also gonna look at their select cards, which I feel has um, plenty of upside. And those are the cards I'm gonna look into buying in either one of these four players based off of the analysis and data that we look at. Plus, we're going to look at the standings because I feel that the opportunity to buy now is there, but I want to prepare for the playoffs coming up and seeing which of these teams do we feel are going to make the playoffs and look at their standings and where they're sitting at right now currently in the NBA and use that as a kind of a, a way to help make a decision on which guys I wanted to buy into. So we're going to go ahead and share the screen and look at the data. All right, first off, here's the Trey Young Prism PSA 10. You can see a value here of 588.44 uh, with a pop count of 8,250. If you look here, you can see the dip. So back in early January, earlier this month, we were at around $800. And now we are at around 600 or so. We see the same thing with Luka Doncic here. He's the base PSA 10 with the insane pop report of 15,000. Uh, current value is at 1,500. Uh, this one, you don't really see too much, but you can see here. I think because the value is so high that it doesn't look as prominent as Trey Young. But we reached around close to $2,000 right around the beginning of the season. And then now we're starting to see a kind of downturn just a little bit to the point where we're at close to 1,500. Um, we got Zion Williamson here. This is as a current value of 654. We have a pop count here of 15,000. Um, here you could definitely see it here. We reached a thousand dollars before the season started. And then now we're going all the way down to about $600. And then John Morant, uh, this one is this particular case um, where it doesn't really show the downward trend. We have here at 648.48, pop count of 12,000. We had the high here at the beginning of the season, and then we saw a dip, and then we see a little spike here. And this spike um, is based off of because he got injured, 
and then he came back and then speculation and and hype and demand came up again uh, because um, we can see that there was a downward trend going down right before his injury and then we had a slight bump and then i think during the season we'll probably see another trend down a little bit but you know this one didn't really seem like uh currently right now at the point where we kind of dipped a bit but based on these ones you can see that yeah the, all all four of these guys have hit a downward trend and I think it's a good opportunity to buy into four, the four of these players. However, the card that I want to focus on is actually their select cards. Now, I'm a big fan of select. Um, I know a lot of people push select, but I, I'm a big fan of it. And I'll go into another video based off of why I feel select is, has good upside and good value. But here, we're going to start off with Trey Young. This is the PSA 10. And we're going to look at the Concourse because that's the most common of the three variations, the Concourse, Premier, and the Courtside. So I feel that the Concourse has some good value. Uh, pop count at 762. Current value of 336. You can see here there was a peak. Um, and then we see the dip. So that's a, good, that's a good indicator right here that this might be a good card to start buying into. Another one here is the Luka Doncic. Now this one um kind of stays stagnant we have 910 uh we hit a peak a couple of weeks ago actually of a thousand dollars um from the beginning of the season we see it go up and then it kind of dipped a little bit and now we're kind of going up and down a little bit but i think with luka Doncic, um a lot of people consider him a generational talent myself included so you won't i don't think you see too much fluctuation in his price i mean prism you do see the fluctuation but for any of his rare or his um lower pop cards I think because the demand is is there is equal to what the pop report shows that his value doesn't really fluctuate too much, especially with the lower pop cards. Um, but I still think he's a good opportunity, especially at less than a thousand dollars. Here's the Zion Williamson Concourse PSA 10. Current value here is 277. Pop count of 1700. This one you see the dip here. We we were at uh, in January we were at $400. Before the season started we we're at $400, and now we're down to around 277, 275. And then the John Morant as well, uh, PSA 10, 293 value, uh, 1700 pop count. We see the increase here, and then we see a dip coming down. Now I talked about select and what I feel and how I feel this has some value in it, and I want to look at their um their standings right now so we look at the standings uh we can see here that the hawks are sitting at the seventh seed and then we have the grizzlies here at the eighth dallas outside and the pelicans way on the bottom here i'm um, just looking at these uh, a couple of things uh, i wanted to look at is where their teams are standing right now in the standings and do i think they have a shot of making the playoffs i think the hawks have a shot of making the playoffs whether it's a seventh seed or the eighth seed and with the memphis Gri grizzlies i think they have a shot too uh, Memphis and Dallas have a good chance of making the playoffs. Uh, the Pelicans, I'm kind of, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs this year. So that kind of tells you that my strategy going into this is that I'm probably going to focus either on Ja, Luca, or Trey, and I'm going to leave Zion alone for, for my own purposes, um, just because of this. Um, I pulled up the eBay listings here, and we can look at the sold listings for the Trey Young uh, Select Concourse PSA 10. We have here, uh, you know, best offers of less than 400. This one went for 400. Um, so you're seeing here went for 500 earlier, but we're going deep into the season. Uh, if we look at current listings for these cards, uh, we see here for 385. Uh, we have another listing here for 499, 4, 449, 500, 509. I think your best bet is to actually try to win this card in an auction. And I think if you win it through an auction, you can get it for a, a lower price. This 385 here is really um, interesting because it, it is a low, that's the lowest price, I believe, out of all of them that I've seen so far. Uh, we're looking at the Luka Doncic here. Uh, we can see that it's been hovering at less than $1,000. So right here, less than 1,000, less than 1,000. I think you can throw an offer for less than $1,000 or about right around $1,000 and you probably will get it. Um, but like I said, I think your best bet is to buy the auctions and try to get it. Because buy it now, um, they already have it priced up a little higher, 1,200 here, 1,300, 2,000. Obviously you can throw a best offer at them and see if they'll take it. But I think your best bet is to go through an auction to see if you get it for less than 1,000. Here's Zion Williamson. Uh, we can see here that his cards have been going for like around 275, 277, 240, 256, 288. So I think you have a shot of sending offers uh, for this card as well to try to get it around 275 
um, and see if they'll take it. Uh, or you can try the listings of the, of the auction listings and try to win it for like around 270 or so. And then John Morant, we see here at 300, um, 252, 300, 319. So I think we're hovering around $300 for John Morant, 315. Here we got one for 399, 399. Um, you can send offers definitely to see if you can get it for a lower price. But like I said, you can try your shot at auctions to see if you get it for like around 315. So based off that, one, you can see with the Prism cards, because it's the highly traded, highly sold, a lot of data there, you can see the dips. Although John Morant is a little weird just because he had that little injury right in the beginning of the season. And when he came back, I think speculation jumped up again. We looked at the select cards. I feel like the select has some value to them, especially because they have a lower pop. And I'm gonna go deeper into select on another video and explain the intricacies of it and why I think uh, the cards have value. Although I know many people have done this before, but I wanted to give my own spin and take on it. And we also looked at the standings because I feel that there's an option to sell at right before the start of the playoffs for these teams that are gonna make the playoffs. Although any four of these guys make a good hold for next year as well, especially since we're at a floor for them. Um, I feel like there's an opportunity to hold. Um, it really depends on who you believe in. Do you believe in Ja? Do you believe in Zion? Do you believe in Trey? Do you believe in Luca? I believe in Luca long term, so that's why I think even at below $1,000, I think that select card is a good buy. Um, but you can't go wrong with an option to sell right before the playoff starts and hope to pick it back up during the off season. So with this floor and the shift on vintage, I think this is a good opportunity to buy into some of these young guys right now and hold right before the playoffs start or hold until next season. So I hope you guys found some value in this. If you guys did, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing. I do these videos daily. Uh, I like to talk about sports cards. I like to talk about the card market and how it fluctuates up and down and ways to strategize and help to make better decisions in purchasing and selling. So I really do hope you guys do find some value in this. And with that being said, my name is Josh and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.